right, all right. Jeff Carroll, Sci-Fi Express Lane. On my way to another Comic Con, so it's no better uh, thing to do to talk about comics is when you're on a way to a Comic Con, because it's on your mind. So, um, Sci-Fi creator, writer, um, comic book creator, you name it, um, filmmaker, and actively doing all, all of those things at one time. I'm involved in uh, Space Funk, um, doing something with my, my movie today. I got a documentary that is still in comic book conventions. Um, and I have a, um, a comic book coming out next month. So um, the last Harlemite. Um, my, con my, my panel is uh, on Why I Love Sci-Fi. That's the name of my documentary. And um, yeah, there's a whole lot of things going on. Anyway, today, I, or right now, I want to talk about pro approaching celebrities. Like, pitching celebrities. So, there was a clip, and I'm going to let you watch it, right, of Denzel Washington being approached um, by some some paparazzis, we'll just say fans, because I don't think they were TMZ, they weren't notorious. They were just people that um, saw him and said, oh, snap, but they did pull out their cameras, which a lot of people do. Fans do that, especially on, on the Denzel Washington level. We're beyond pictures now. Pictures used to be the thing. Now they want to, you know, um, get you video. And I guess to some celebrities, it even feels like sort of entrapment. So um, I'm going to let you watch it and we'll be back. Yeah, Looking good today, bro. Yeah. All right, good seeing you. Right, good to see Take you. it easy. Have All a good right, day. All right. Oh, I got ladies out here working too. All That's right. right. Hey, we That's we happy new. to see you, Denzel. Hey, what's your name? Where are you from? Dallas. You from Dallas, Texas? Yeah. What you doing out here in California? Just trying to shoot you. Right. But I mean, are you like a professional photographer? You working? Getting yeah, them? just this is what I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Does it pay? Yeah, I mean. Well, what do you really want to do? What you, I, what's, I the, what's the long-term plan? What you got? I don't know. This one I'm, I'm doing asking now. you. What do you love? What do you love to do? I like to take pictures of actors coming people, out of school. People, anybody, anybody. It's hard to find. But you do kind of artsy stuff too. You do. A what little you, bit. That's kind of just what I do. You, you want to take a picture with me? He'll take it for you. <laughs> <laughs> He'll take it for you. No, you come hey, over here. I heard okay. a story. I heard a story. Oh. oh, so that's what they mean when they say opportunity staring you right in the face and you don't even recognize it. I don't know about y'all, but when I was watching this video, it seemed like Denzel was asking a lot of opportunity questions. And she slapped all them questions down like a Serena Williams overhand. <laughs> all right, in that video, welcome, well, welcome back. In that video, you saw Denzel start asking the young lady, you know, he's, he, we couldn't see who was in the video. But it was obviously a young man talking, and then it was had to be a young lady next to him. And Denzel said, "Hey, young lady, what you doing? You know, are you, you, what do you do? What do you want to do? You know?" And it felt like, damn, she must look. I thought she must look nice, right? So maybe he's like, "Yo, you could be an actress," and that's probably what most people thought. And then I thought, I remember this Denzel from um, the Equalizer too, and. You know, he's, he was, you know, being fatherly in his, yo, good work, none of this is going to amount to nothing type um, spiel, you know. And while we don't know um, the, the street pharmacists, drug dealers that were unsuccessful, um, if you live long enough, you'll realize that a lot of the people that you didn't know were actually involved in street pharmacy in some phase in their lives. And it's like after you turn 50, you know, they start coming out of the closet because I think they feel that, you know, they've probably made enough. Um, they are, um, you know, whatever whatever they went through, it's over. But, you know, they, they come out the closet, they'll come out the closet. I had, you know, one of my friends tell me, yo, dude, in the 90s, I used to have uh, a, a, a crack house as big as the one in New Jack City. You know, we used to make 
close to $50,000 a day. You know, easy, you know, million a week. I'm like, God, dog. You know, um, I didn't know that. He was low profile. He was a successful drug dealer. So I'm not going to hate on the... Let me say this. I, I do dislike the drugs, but <laughs> the business, I can't hate on the business, right? Um, so, yeah. Anyway, that's what Denzel was doing in the equalizer to the young fella. And back to the video, I felt he was doing something, he was about to do something similar where he was going to offer the young lady you know, a, a nice lecture. I'm an old man. I know how to do it. I'm a school teacher. I taught kids out of, of, of messed up um, um, uh, paths in life all the time. You know, you're going to take pictures. What are you going to do? You're going to be in a, 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 what do you call it? Um, a studio? You're going to be a photographer, a, a famous photographer? Now, that is naive on Denzel's part. People that take pictures on the street, are you assuming that this is what they do for their living? Are you kidding me? These people do this stuff as a hobby. These people can be anything. You know, they have, they can have their lives together and just do this stuff on the side. That's how popular it has become. And if you don't know anything about black people, we are multitaskers. We are multiple job holders. And, you know, contrary to what some Caribbeans like to think of us, you know, we aren't lazy. We do work two and three jobs. We do a job for ourselves. Some people come to this country and they trust these jobs and they learn in the hard way that sometimes these jobs don't do you right. So you have to do some side hustle. Side hustle is an African-American term. You understand? That's because we work hard. We ain't, we ain't lazy. So anyway, the guy in the video at the end, he says, um... Uh, you missed your opportunity. You know, this is what missing your opportunity looks like. And that's to assume that Denzel was asking those questions sincerely, right? To put her down. Like Denzel has been known to put people down, right? No. Let me tell you something about celebrities, all right? I'm lucky to have known a few since before they were celebrities, right? And not everybody is a LeBron James. You understand? LeBron James put his dudes from high school down. Every basketball player had friends from high school. They don't all have a team. I mean, if there's 10 of them active right now, I'd be surprised. You understand? Because it, first of all, you gotta trust people. You gotta know how to use people and trust them, right? Not everybody puts people down, whether they're basketball players or not. It's hard. Some people don't want to even tell you there's a job available at their own company because they don't want you to be promoted over them. I'm going to tell you, it ain't easy even putting people down. I mean, I know we hear the success stories like I wrote about it. Um, you know, we hear it uh, allegedly. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm guessing right now because I got to use popular um, examples. But I think 112 got there put on by singing to either Puffy or one of his producers outside of a club in Atlanta called 112. And that's where they got their name from because it was singing and they got put on. I think Soul For Real was also put on for singing for Heavy D or one of his friends. I think um, Boys to Men sang for Michael Bivens. Um, and uh, I know Das Effect. They got put on by um, performing at a talent show where EPMD were the judges. But I'm going to tell you, my friend Andre from Das Effect, he was rapping in high school. He rapped at a lot of different things. That ain't the first celebrity that he ran into, and it wasn't the first celebrity that saw him. But guess what? It was a business-minded celebrity. You know, Eric Sermon and, and Robert Parrish was building something. They wanted to be, they had aspirations. They had a whole record uh, uh, imprint at Sony, all right? Right there with Russell Simmons, because I worked at Sony, so I saw their record company. Um, singing for Bad Boy. Bad Boy was, well, Puffy, as you know, is the, the music mogul, but he was definitely a business people. 
I had my company, Red, Black, and Green Promotions. I was known for seeing, if I saw you drumming on the sidewalk, yo, I'm gonna talk to you. If you was good, I'd be like, yo, you can make some money in the college market. I put artists on to the college market. Yeah, there was black comedians and like Latino comedians doing the college market, but those artists went and sought out those agents, you know what I'm saying? They were at comedy clubs where the agents were sitting. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, they won a competition. It was really hard. I mean, you talk to my man Keith, Keith Robinson. He was one of the black comedians that was in the college market before I got there. You know what I'm saying? But when I got there, what did I do? I started going to the comedy clubs. I started pulling my cats. Dudes was making a hundred dollars, right? When I first started doing the college market, I paid them a hundred, hundred dollars. It took twenty-five dollars for myself. And then when I got with the with the college market circuit, then we I learned the business and I started putting people on. I I made um I, my friend did airbrushing, and I saw that they had airbrushing in the college market. I came up with a hip hop airbrushing thing. I saw a video. Uh, dance and I talked to my DJ friend. I said, Yo, I'm gonna buy a screen, four thousand dollars. Bought a screen, and we did maybe a year or two of a video dance parties. But we got a subscription to the video uh, dance music thing, and we learned how to do it. That's putting people on. I went to Africa and met a friend of a, a, a girl, the daughter of one of my mentors. I was working at the Apollo. I put, I said, Yo, they probably hiring. I Help get her a job at the Apollo. She ended up becoming bigger than me and leaving the Apollo and working for celebrities all around, you know, the country. One of the biggest celebrities right now, she managed. But she didn't work in the music industry before me, you know. So when it comes to putting people on, you got to look for somebody that puts people on. And sometimes you can get burnt. You can get salty. You can put people on and get jealous of their success, you know, or have high expectations. You know, the mafia be putting people on, but you better believe they want their um, return on their investment. So if they put you on, you better believe they're going to want something from you. So you got to be careful of those people as well. But 90% of the celebrities that you meet are not business minded, even for them, their own selves. They have managers, they have agents, and they don't even do their own business. Most of them are um, um, products. They are somebody that other people are handling. Now, mind you, music has liberated itself with Spotify and even filmmakers. They have liberated themselves on Tubi. But by the time they get to become a big Rihanna, a big Drake, or big Justin Bieber, sometimes those independent artists they stop because they done made enough money. Like Christina Aguilera or uh, uh, what's, the, what's the other, um, all of the people that I was into before, um, 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 what's this, uh, um, what's the big singer, damn. So all like um, Katy Perry, um, Lady Gaga, um, Christina Aguilera, those were all of the white singers that I was into before this big one, Taylor Swift. But like, sometimes they made all the money. They don't have to drive anymore. They ain't business minded. They're not hustling themselves sideways. They don't want to do this forever. So you got to you got to think about that as well. Some of these artists don't hustle for themselves forever. They hustle for themselves and that was it. Not everybody is a Timberland that's going to put you on. That Not everybody is a Pharrell, you know, that's going to put you on. Some of these artists, they don't know how to put people on and some of them don't have the interest. So when you out here looking and meeting a Denzel Washington on the street, he may not want to put nobody on. Name somebody that he's put on. I don't know. He should. I mean, by default, there may be people out here that say, yo, he inspired me. He gave me nurturing words. But did he put somebody on? I'm talking about somebody that had no connections. You bring them in, give them their first job and, 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 and discover them. I don't know if he's done that. You understand what I'm saying? Some of these people, you know, feel like they worked hard and you need to work hard. They're not going to make it easier for the next person because they believe in the diligence of hard work paying off. So why are they going to make it easy for you? Sheesh.
that is a Republican, um, uh, what do you call it, philosophy. And I happen to be, you know, more liberal minded. You know, I want to make it easier for people. I saw how hard it was for my mother. So, yeah, you meet me, you be an actor, you be anybody. I'm that type of person, you know, that's going to be like, yo, I give you some good advice. I'm not going to hate on where you are. I'm going to walk next to you and be like, yo, let's do this together. I'm going to share you my experiences. Not every artist, not every person does that. So, um, this post was supposed to be, you know, about me talking about the put your, you know, um, what is it? Uh, please listen to my demo, you know, era, because in the era of dim, um, CDs or tapes, right? There was the, um, the movement to have your demo tape ready, your CD ready, because you wanted to give it to any celebrity that you meet, you know, this is your break. This is your opportunity. You know what I'm saying? So you always want to stay ready. And I'm going to tell you, and I wanted to do this also, to give you my list of people that I have met and either have blown or just wasn't ready. I met Shaquille O'Neal. He's a, he's a putter on, right? But, you know, when I met him, he was at Comic Con. I was in the hallway. I might have given him something, but I was thrown off because I'm ready to pitch him my comic book ideas or my m movie ideas because it was way before I was uh, COVID and um, I did not have all the comic books that I had. So at the time, I was a science fiction writer and a filmmaker. So I didn't even have the rights back for Gold Digger Killer, right? So um, what do you call it? When I went up to him, I don't even know what I said, but I don't think I was ready. I sat down and talked to his girlfriend at the time, Hoops, you know, and I didn't have anything ready for her, but I do believe I gave her my information. You never lose that chance. But, you know, and sometimes talking to people, you introduce yourself, they may be like, no, oh, you are this person. I was thinking of, you know, this. But with Shaq, I wanted to be like, yo, I work with Michael Blackson, you know, all of these other people, because he really likes Michael Blackson. And, um, you know, I didn't get a chance, I, that opportunity, um, you know, all of my artists. I just talked to Tracy Morgan on the phone last week. Not that I was going to pitch him anything, but, you know, what I do by default is I just let them know what I do, you know. And if they're, in, if they're interested in, in something I do, then cool. Um, I went to my man Pierre. Um, who has the talk show Panic Room and I brought him my, um, what do you call it, comic book because I wanted him to see it, wanted him to know I was in the industry and you know sometimes people get real uh, uh, in inundated with pitches, right? So you got to be mindful. My pitch ain't really a pitch, although it is a pitch. It ain't a pitch like, yo, do this. It's a notification. It's like saying, if you didn't know me, this is how I'm doing. Sometimes artists will even get frustrated with that. Be like, nigga, you told me you got a new pair of shoes just to know that I, you know, in case I wanted to do someone's shoes. Well, it is what it is. At the end of the day, I'm telling you who I am. If, if you know me as somebody else and now I do something new, then that's part of me introducing and you take it. You can't back down. It was a real tight conversation, but there it is. You know, I wasn't pitching like you're happy on your show. My pitch was like, if you're having a show on comic books, you know your man Jeff is into comic books. How about that? You know, um, but other than that, how you doing? Who else did I, I pitch? JB Smooth. Um, I pitch Michael Blackson. You know, shoot, I pitch Keith Robinson. And we're, and we're more friends than any type of um, representative. I never represented in him. But yeah, um, so I had that. Who else? Uh, gosh, what's up? Uh, Dave Chappelle, my man Donald Rawlings. And these are all artists. If you know me, these are people that you know I should be able to. This ain't no far reaching. It ain't me meeting Denzel. You know what I'm saying? Um, I ran into to Laz Alonzo. If you know me, I took an acting class. My first acting class was with, was with Laz. You know what I'm saying? So that wasn't a hard, total hard swing, you know what I'm saying? But um, again, I did I did my diligence. I was there. I maintained, 
you know what I'm saying, myself. Um, who was it that was doing that? My man Donnell Rollins got me to uh, Dave Chappelle's show. And I have booked Dave. I have, you know, he used to come to the club that I worked at, the Boston Comedy Club. So, yeah, I definitely had no problem talking to Dave. I gave Dave my book. I gave Dave my um, a DVD of my movie. So I stayed ready. But you got to understand, if you, you know, it doesn't waste it, don't think you're wasting something on a celebrity that's not business minded, but be ready because they may not be business minded. They may not be enterprising. And there's no slant on them. Shoot, everybody isn't business minded for a reason. Because being business minded is a lot of responsibility, especially a writer. Like, you know, I met uh, uh, um, Eric, Mike, uh, Eric Jerome Dickey, right? And everybody knows him, you know, from um, what you call it, uh, from um, uh, what do you call it? his book? He wrote the book um, for Storm and in, in uh, Black Panther when they met. But at the end of the day, you know, some of these writers they don't want to hear your stuff, you know, because they may have something like it. There's a whole lot of things going on. So um, with with Eric Jerome Dickey, it was like when I met um, in, in R.I.P. It's like when I met L.A. Banks. L.A. Banks said, yo, good work. Good work, my man, my man. But I can't listen to it because I need an NDA. It might conflict with something that I'm working on. So, you know, pitching to people ain't easy. Um, damn, I'm over my time. All right, y'all, listen. I'm out of here. I'm on my way to the comic book convention. I actually took a wrong turn. So I got to pay a toll because <laughs> I took the wrong turn. But anyway, um... Yeah, all right. I just wanted to touch base with you, let you know my opinion of this Denzel video and my opinion of pitching to people um, and, and my experiences with it. So um, check it out. If you do, let me know what you've done and and, and let's, let's talk about it. Anyway, uh, Jeff Carroll, sci-fi writer, sci-fi express lane. And um, yo, this was a long one, but... It is what it is. All right. Like, subscribe, share, and your your comments. You know what I'm saying? Share this on your page. Let's talk about it. All right. Peace.